What's up, guys? My name is Steve. Thank you for stopping by my channel. I'm just an American guy on a journey to discover my British and Irish ancestry. Today, we're going to be reacting to the One Man Gurkha Army, the stand of Sergeant Diprasad Pun from September 2010. Um, I've actually checked out the Gurkhas um, on a previous video. I, I, I learned how they basically um, became British soldiers and um, thought that was a really interesting video. Um, and it made me interested to check out more Gurkha related videos. And this was actually recommended in the comment section. And, you know, it kind of got my attention. The one man Gurkha army. And I'm sitting here thinking, who is this guy? What did he do? Um, sounds pretty interesting. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and check it out. See what's going on here. On the 17th of September 2010, a platoon from the 1st Battalion, the Royal Gurkha Rifles, was stationed at two patrol bases near the village of Rahim Kaleh in the north of Helmand Province. At some point during the day, the bulk of the platoon departed the bases to secure a key road to the east, with two small detachments remaining behind to garrison the outposts. Tasked with holding the southernmost patrol base were four Gurkhas, among them Sergeant Dibrasad Pun who, in the evening of the 17th, was on sentry duty on the roof of a two-story compound that was at the center of the base. I just want to say, uh, sorry, I mispronounced his name. I think, well, based off of this guy, he said, I got the first name correct, Dipper said, um, but he said Poon instead of Pun. So uh, just wanted to correct that. Man in his post for several hours, Sergeant Pun soon began to hear some noises materializing from the other side of the main gate, and as he later recalled. I thought at first maybe it was a cow, but my suspicions soon built up and I saw two Taliban digging to lay down an IED in oh. front of our gate. Immediately, the sergeant called out for the two men to identify themselves, but instead of receiving a verbal response, bullets and RPGs began to hit the patrol base as a significantly larger Taliban force appeared from out of the darkness. Realising the outpost was under attack, Sergeant Pun grabbed a nearby radio and informed his platoon commander of the unfolding situation, before turning his attention onto the enemy. As soon as I knew they were Taliban, I thought I was going to die, but as soon as I started firing, that feeling went away. I knew I had to do something before they killed me and my three comrades. I thought, before they kill me, I have to kill some of them. Picking up his SAAT, the Gurkha fired off a rifle grenade at the attacking enemy, prior to detaching a nearby general purpose machine gun from its tripod and returning fire on the advancing Taliban fighters, who were moving forward from three directions. Within minutes, however, he had spent all his machine gun ammunition and so resorted to using a mix of grenades to disrupt the attack, including six phosphorus, six fragmentation and four rifle grenades. Once these two had become expended, he picked up his SAAT again and, moving from position to position, he continued to engage the enemy, some of whom managed to break through his line of sight and reach the compound. Looking for a way to get onto the roof, some of the insurgents began scaling up the building's mud walls, with one fighter reaching the top first and proceeding to rush the Gurkha. Training his SAAT onto the enemy fighter, Sergeant Pun shot and killed the insurgent seconds before experiencing a weapon malfunction, just as another Taliban fighter appeared on the roof. Ditching his rifle, the sergeant grabbed the nearby GPMG tripod and held it at the second insurgent, knocking him unconscious. Moments after, Sergeant Pun heard several more of the enemy attempting to climb up to the roof, who he pushed back by dropping a sandbag onto one and forcing the others to retreat when a claymore mine detonated. Eventually, after 17 minutes of heavy fighting, the enemy attack had collapsed and what was left of the Taliban force withdrew back in the direction they had come from. A short while later, British reinforcements arrived at the patrol base to strengthen its defences, where they found an exhausted Sergeant Diprasad Pun still on the roof. Sergeant Pun later stated, I thought there might have been around 20 to 30 Taliban fighters involved in the attack 
Balete locals told me it was probably around 15. I know I'm very lucky to be alive. I didn't think the attack would ever end and I nearly collapsed when it was over. I did what I was trained to do. There wasn't any choice but to fight. Engagement. <clears throat> Sergeant Dipper Poon fired 250 rounds from his. Wow. No kidding. Better die than be a coward. Wow. So that one man fought off at least 15 enemy combatants. Wow. You know, um, you guys told me that the, um, the Gurkha were pretty badass and, um, if if this man um, is any indication of that, I would say that is absolutely true. Um, you know, the British military are very lucky to have them. Um, they seem like kind of fearless warriors. Um, wow. I, I, I had heard this too right here. Better to die than be a coward. Uh, I'd heard that was the... Uh, the motto of the Gurkhas. And I, I, I thought that was just people, you know, saying, you know, saying that I didn't think it was actually, but yeah, it's the actual motto. No kidding. I, I, I did not know that. Wow. The Gurkhas definitely seem interesting. I'm, I'm wondering what makes them because I, before I even started, before I watched the other Gurkha video, I had, heard that they were fierce. They were fierce fighters that were extremely brave and they were tough as nails, basically. And I'm sitting there and I'm just wondering what makes them like that? You know, is it their upbringing? Is it something that happens when they, when they join the British military and they set themselves apart? I want to say it's something about their upbringing because if they are known to be exceptional fighters, exceptionally brave, exceptionally, um, you know, fierce, then, you know, you would think that would be part of the people would describe that just as the military, every single military uh, member versus or soldier versus they're talking specifically about the Gurkhas. So there has to be something about being brought up in Nepal that causes these men to be fierce because I noticed that that was what was originally said to have got like, what was it? 200 and some years ago when the British started trying to get uh, the Gurkhas to join the British military, they noticed that they were fierce and whatnot. What is it that makes them like that? What, like, where does that come from? Is it, is it just the hard life that they're brought up with, you know, you know, on their farms in the mountains of the Himalayas, or I don't know. But this guy, definitely, definitely a badass. Um, you know, it takes, it takes a, it takes a strong, brave warrior to stand up to, you know, over a dozen combatants, you know, what do you say about that? I'm surprised he didn't earn the, uh, is it the Purple Cross? Is that, is it the Purple Cross, which is the number one, the the top? What did they say he, he, which one did they say he got? Hold on, where is it at? Uh, he, we're, we're, okay. The Conspicuous Gallantry Cross, which is the second highest military decoration. Isn't it the Purple Cross? Is that what it's called? I can't remember what it's called. I think it's Purple Cross, but I may be mistaken on that. But, you know, I would have thought he would have actually got that. But still, the, the second highest military decoration isn't anything to sneeze at. So he definitely deserved that, uh, protecting his fellow soldiers. Definitely going to check out some more of uh, the Gurkhas.
they seem really interesting. I want to make I want to understand what makes them so fierce and you know how they become the brave soldiers they ultimately become. Um, if that makes sense. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for stopping by. Please click that like button. Feel free to leave your comments and suggestions for other videos I may enjoy, or if you want to add to what this video said. Um, also, please uh, subscribe to continue to join me on my journey to discover my British and Irish ancestry. Until next time, guys. Peace.